Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yamini, and each week we'll look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of the complete and speedy recovery, the Rafu Shalema of Arav Amitai Ben Shoshana, Leimin Shabaskitel, and Shaul Ben Brita. This week's Parsha Perspective is in loving memory of Edward Ben Ephraim, Shlomo Ben Edward, and Yerachmiah Daniel Ben Gedalia. May their souls be uplifted, and may their memories be a blessing. This week's Torah portion is Parsha's Amor, uniquely different. Our Parsha contains many laws specifically pertaining to Karnim to priests in the Mishkan or in the Beis Mingash. We begin with the law that is applicable till this very day, the mitzvah, the commandment that a Karnim must remain tahar, ritually pure at all times. He is not allowed to come in contact with a human corpse. The only exception to this rule for a regular Karnim are his immediate relatives, his wife, his father, mother, brother, sister, son, or daughter, heaven forbid. But a Kohen Gadol, a high priest, can only become ritually impure for one person, a person who has no one to bury them, called a Mes Mitzvah. The Parsha concludes by teaching us about the different holidays, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Pesach, and Shavuos. However, a question comes to mind. The Parsha begins by dealing with laws pertaining just to Kohenim for their service in the Mishkan and in the Bismigdash. But we conclude the Parsha by learning about all the holidays in the Jewish calendar year. So why does the Parsha deviate and change topics from the Kornim to the Chagim of the Torah? The Chizkuni, the famous French rabbi, Rav Chizkiya Ben from the 13th century, answers this question by looking at the words of the Pasuk. The Torah writes, Daber el Bnei Yisrael v'amartel Speak to the Jewish nation and tell them. According to the Chizkuni, this was a gathering and assembly call for the entire nation. Once they congregated, they were given and explained the details of each holiday. The Cheskuni explains that although the two different topics are in the same Parsha, they are not connected. Firstly, because these laws begin a new chapter, chapter Chav Gimel 23. Secondly, these laws were instructed to the entire Jewish people at once, once they assembled. And this is in stark contrast to the laws at the beginning of our Parsha, for they were just told to the Kohanim. As the Pasuk writes, Emor el Echehanim b'nei Aaron v'amartelehem. God said to Moshe, tell the Kohanim, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, However, the Ramban, Rav Moshe ben Nachman, a leading scholar, philosopher, and Kabbalist, gives a deeper and profound explanation. He writes that the connection between the Kohenim, between the priests, and the holidays, the Chagim of the Torah, is twofold. Firstly, each holiday has specific and unique sacrifices, karbonis, that were offered by the Kohen. For example, the Korban Pesach, the Pesach offering, or the Oymer offering on Shavuos, or the 70 bulls that were sacrificed during Sukkot by the Kohenim themselves. But the main reason, according to the Ramban, that our Parsha has both topics is because it reveals the uniqueness of every Jewish person. So far in the book of Ayikra, the emphasis and focus has been on the sacrifices of the Mishkan and those that serve in it. But an unintended result of such a spotlight may be that a regular Jew, not a coin or lady, could feel that it is not their job to have a deep connection with God. The Ramban explains that since a Jew might think that it is only the coin or Levi's duty to be pure and serve God, Hashem commanded Moshe to let the nation know that every single Jewish person is obligated to have a personal, unique, and profound relationship with their Creator. They must use their individual and singular abilities to serve God and fulfill their specific potential. This is so important in our daily life because we must recognize and respect each person's individuality and what they have to give to the world. For a moral society is only built on the notion that every person has a part to play and love and kindness to share with the rest of the world. And this lesson is ever more prevalent as we approach the special day of Lag Baimer. For it is a pause in the morning period for the students of the great and holy Rebbe Akiva who do not respect and value each other. There is an extremely powerful quote and profound quote by Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory. Having faith in God means having faith in other people. The measure of our righteousness and religiosity lies in how many people we value, not in how many people we condemn. Have a great weekend, good Shabbos, and a happy and holy Lag Boimer. Thank you for tuning in to the Parsha Perspective. 
Check out our website, thepartialperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to thepartialperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.